Well, good googly moogly. Friends, it's that weekend time, and you know what happens on the weekends? Is we re-air what we did last weekend. And did we do something big last week? You dang skippy. Friends, we had Servolution Sunday. And today, guys, you're gonna see it. It's gonna be an hour and a half of a fearless demonstration of freedom, redemption, and the goodness of God, and you're gonna dig it. So be sure and be a really cool media missionary and be sure and like this, be sure and share this, be sure and comment on this and say, hey, this is where I'm at, this is where I'm watching this from, I'm standing with you guys and I love you guys. Yeah, man, you guys are gonna love this. Welcome, my friends, to this very special edition of the Open Door Experience, boom. Hey, hello, hello, <laughs> hello, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning in here at Open Door Church in Burleson, Texas. What time is it? Oh, what time is it? What's that time for lunch? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, you guys, it is Servolution Sunday, and we are about to get started here. We are so excited. Look at all of these cool people that are here to serve, guys. Can you guys say hi? Oh my Woo! gosh. I just feel the love of the Lord right now. He is so, so proud of us. You guys, we are out here in the cold. It is cloudy. It might rain, but we don't care because we're here to say Jesus is more than all of that. That's right. So guys, please like, comment, share this message over to your timeline. We have a message for you, but it's not until 11. Right now, we want you to just celebrate with us and join this party that we've got going on here. So we have... Pastor Jerry, and Pastor Cherry is about to tell everybody just how we serve, just That's the heart great. behind serving. We've already been talking about it through this Servolution Sunday, but a um, message that Pastor Troy has been bringing, but now it is time to demonstrate it That's because right. we're not just talk, I'm right? Excited. We're not just talk, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we are we're action. We're going to prove it. We're the All hands right. of Jesus. So I see Jerry is ready to start this. Are you ready, Jerry? <laughs> What an incredible day to come out here and be the hands and feet of Jesus. I'm so excited. We do this every year. It's one of the highlight things that we do here at Open Door Church. Now, there's a phrase that Pastor Troy uh, shared a few years ago. The church has left his building, and we're actually outside of the building today, right? Amen. And so we've been in a, a series this month called Servolution. I talked about how you bring the kingdom of heaven down to earth is through acts of service. And every year when we do this, we actually set aside the Sunday after Thanksgiving and we actually go and become the hands and feet of Jesus. A lot of you are doing this every month through our homeless outreach and the food bank that we normally do towards Godly. But we open it up one time a year for the whole church to come together and kind of taste uh, the ministry that we do every week of the year. Uh, We are uh, a very prophetic church. We're all about supernatural signs, miracles, and wonders. We're about that. We're about missions all over the world, but part of our DNA, and Pastor Troy and Pastor Leanna actually started this over 30 years ago. It's actually outreach by uh, feeding people, taking care of people's needs, and also doing our food bank ministry, and that's what we're here today. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you a quick spill of what we expect as we are serving those that have already been lined up for a couple of hours. Number one, we're going to treat them with the most up respect and honor. We're actually going to treat them like they paid hundreds of dollars to come and get what we're giving away for free. We're going to honor them. We're going to tell them thank you. Uh, for those of you that are actually passing out the food as they go by, you can, you can pray for them. You, not, not so much out loud, but you can pray for them because we do have people going through the line, praying for everybody that goes through. We have a prophetic team out here actually speaking words over them, kingdom words, but you can pray for them. And we want you to honor them, and we want you to tell every car that comes by, thank you so much for coming today. It's such a blessing to us to see you. So love on them. Uh, We don't want you going up and touching anybody because of just what we're going through right now in this season. But honor them. As cars come through, make sure they come to a complete stop. We want everybody to be safe. Uh, We don't want nobody's toes ran over and stuff like that. So let the car come to a complete stop. Then you can put the goods and the car can move on. There will be people instructing online on how to move the cars. But the biggest thing is you guys get to be the hands and feet of Jesus. You guys get to love on these people. You actually are walking out what we call the heart of the Father to those in our community. And what better way for the bride of Christ in these times, these these kind of chaotic times, to actually show people that we're not scared, number one, We don't live by fear, number two, that we have a God that's greater than any situation we've ever walked in, and he's always bigger than our problems, and you guys get to demonstrate that today. It's actually what happened in the book of Acts. They actually did acts of service, so I'm so excited. So I'm going to disperse here in a moment of prayer. 
And we'll need people lined up right here to pass out. We need people lined up right there. We need people to work, work the lines. And if you don't have anything to do, just pray. Just pray, pray, pray. And I want to encourage you guys, this is what Open Door is about. And I'm so glad that you're here today to get to experience it if you've never been here. Let me ask you this real quick. Who has never been to a homeless or a food bank outreach before? Raise your hands. Wow, look at that. All right, well, this is your initiation day into the kingdom, right on? All right. Will you guys join me as we call the Father down into this, that signs, miracles, and wonders. We're literally going to believe that as people go through, God does incredible things in their lives because his heart is being shared. And this is what we do. So let's pray. Father, I love you, and I praise you, and I give you glory, and I give you honor, and I thank you, God. It's, it's the week of Thanksgiving, and God, we want to thank you for all the great things that you've done. You're a good, good Father. And we love you, and we praise you, and we honor you today. Be with every man, woman, boy and girl, child that's actually serving right now. And I invite the Holy Spirit to come and cover this whole entire ministry this morning. And as people are going through and there's, there's, there's physical needs, they're, they're dealing with sickness or some kind of disease, just because of the love of the fathers here so strong, I pray right now that you begin to even heal them in their car. We want to hear testimonies of how people were here today. There's going to be people going through the line today that have lost jobs and are struggling financially or, or they can't pay their bills. God, I pray right now from the north, the south, and the east, and the west, God, that you begin to send in income streams that they didn't know anything about. Those that are needing jobs or even cars, God, begin to open that door of prayer and su uh, supply their every need. We literally call upon the name Jehovah Jireh, my Lord will provide. We call upon the name Jehovah Rapha, the Lord is my healer. We also call upon Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banner, that you're going to show up and begin to fight battles that they're even unaware of. So Lord, bless this day. Bless our pastor, Pastor Troy and Pastor Liana and the team that's in Houston as he begins to speak to them. God, Holy Spirit, move in such a way. And also bless our online crowd at 11 o'clock when they are actually being able to see the service. We pray that people would get saved today, God. And we just love you and honor you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. One more quick thing. As, as we're here serving today, many of you have been asking about what you can do with your tithes and offerings. If you do have a physical check or cash, there's, there's a black box right here, and there's one over there in the line. Or you can go online and text 77977, and uh, when it comes back up, ODC Experience, and you can actually give that way. Because even though we're not doing church, we still, we still can be a blessing and continue the ministry. So guys, go, go find your spots, get ready, and we'll be opening up the lines here in just a few minutes. God bless you so much. Jesus is still resurrecting people. That's right. He still has assignments for you. Do not give up hope. Do not give hope, up hope for your people and your family. I know there's a lot of stuff going on right now, especially with COVID, you know, and it can be scary, but just don't lose just faith. Just don't, yeah. don't put more faith in COVID than you can in Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Jesus Christ can heal. Oh, he's a miracle worker. Yes. And uh, as long as he still has the remnant on the earth, that means the Holy Spirit's here. So he's still right. performing and working miracles. And if you need more miracle stories, I mean, we've got billions. We do. Billions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. It'd take us all day to sit down and think about which ones we're not going to talk about. Yeah. But right. Let's just talk about the ones for the food bank since we're in the Servolution Sunday and we're about to do the food ministry. So wait, what's your favorite testimonies and things well, that you've heard about the food bank and miracles that have happened out there. So um, Pastor Troy, whenever he was praying over somebody, um, it was on their cheek or their face. It was on the cheek, yeah. Yeah, they, they had cancer, and it literally, as he was praying, just fell off into his hand. Like, yeah. fell off into it. I mean, that's, that's incredible. I, I can't even imagine, and like, being that person and just... I mean, I would have passed out. To go more into <laughs> that, we have so many people that come in through the line that pr they're going to the doctor and they got a bad report and they want us to pray for them. Amazing. And we pray for them. And then they give us, they're like, we went to the doctor and the doctor said no cancer. Yeah. I, I, I and think just like, that's, that's incredible. incredible. I, I can't remember a food bank outreach where we don't hear a testimony of someone that has gotten healed that has been prayed healed. for two mm -hmm. weeks before, a month before, two yes. months before. Almost every other Saturday that we do it here locally, uh, we hear testimonies yeah. of people actually getting healed. Mm -hmm. 
and, and, and people in the body of Christ, well, it might be God's will. No, 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 it's not it's might always, be. Yes, it is it God's is will. It's always God's will. Always if the atmosphere of heaven comes down and invades our earth, then there's no sickness. You know, that verse about entering um, the kingdom through the servant's quarter. Yeah. Like, I feel like yes. the Lord loves to show off at the food bank Absolutely. outreach because we're, we're serving. Yeah. yeah. And we're, we're, we're entering into his kingdom because we're serving. And so, I mean, not only, like... Sure, we can talk about physical healings, but I think one of my favorite stories is the mom that came through, and she prayed for her. She just was like, I'm estranged from my daughter. I haven't seen her in years. Oh, that's amazing. Um, she's, you know, we have a terrible relationship. Please pray that that relationship gets reconciled. Literally within the week, yeah. her daughter reached out to her. Not her reaching out to her that's daughter. incredible. Her daughter yeah. reached out to her. That's and incredible. I'm just like... The Lord wants to heal your marriages. He wants to yeah. heal your relationships. He wants to heal your friendships. Yes. One of my favorite scriptures is Isaiah 61. And Jesus actually brought it to light in the book of Luke. He stepped into the temple and he pulled the scroll of Isaiah. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the good news. And that portion of scripture talking about binding up the broken heart. And that's what God does. He still yes. puts back together relationships. It's Absolutely. amazing. You remember that guy about the jobs? The job and the job came to his door. Can <gasps> I you love that one. Yeah. He, yeah, I, I've, I, I mean, you say that. He came and said, I need a job. Would you pray that I get a job? And actually, someone came to his door and offered him a job. To his door. You're talking about personal delivery. After we prayed for him at the food bank. I mean, yeah. incredible. DoorDash it's, jobs. We're right. not only giving away food, <laughs> we're also giving away jobs. Wow. Yeah. Our God's creative, man. He is. He's very creative. He is. And, and just, so just testimony after testimony. And and uh, and any, even with the food bank, there's a lot of times that yeah. uh, the need is so great, we are low on supplies. And even this week, we were considering, okay, we've ordered extra trucks. We know we're going to do this. I get a phone call early in the week uh, from another food bank saying, hey, we got six stores. We don't know what to do with them. Can you handle the food? I said, uh, let me think about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, man, they, showed, they brought it to us. And yeah. part of the food that we're giving out today is because another food bank just called us. And uh, we were wondering if we're going to have enough product to f uh, facilitate the needs of the community. That's and out of nowhere, and you guys didn't even know about that. No. No. But I got a call this week, and they brought a truck by on Wednesday and, and gave us a ton of, uh, tons of pallets of food and stuff, and it happens. And even with that, there's a lot of times where there's needs, and we look at the needs and say, man, we don't got enough. And all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're trying to put food for 50 families, and we only have enough product for six. And all of a sudden, a miracle happens. And, dude, it's not 50. It's 250. And wow. we're just like, don't count, guys. Don't count them. Don't, yeah. Because we don't want the miracle to stop. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it's like Jesus breaking the bread and fishes, and now it's canned exactly. goods. You yeah. know, Still we don't miracles. have enough. And, <laughs> and we look at the line and say, well, how are we going to support this? And how are we going to do yeah. this? We only have two pallets of food. Yeah, we... And the two pallets miraculously turned into ten pallets. How do you explain that? You no. don't. You, you don't, don't try to explain it, no. and you don't try to reason with it. You, you just say God. That's right. You know, I feel like... I really feel like there's people that are watching online right now that need the miracle power of God to show up in their life. And, and I'm just going to be bold and say so into this, yes. so into what we do here, yes. in, into this miracle, uh, the miracles that we give out and watch the Lord sow back into you. So Absolutely. if you want to sow into this, you can do so very easily. You can call our calling center. They have operators standing by right now. 877-413-0888. You can always text to give open door EXP to 77977. So the word is open door EXP and the number is 77977. Or you can always go online to www.opendoorexperience.com forward slash giving. And we also have a PO box, but if y'all could put the graphic on the screen, what is it like 3775? Okay, good. It's there. It's right there on the screen, you guys. Thank you, Hunter. <laughs> Thank you, Hunter. <laughs> Saved her. <laughs> All right, and so then you can send it a check, a money order, a cashier's check right there to that P.O. box. It's a secured P.O. box. And, and just know that um, if you call 877-413-0888, we have operators that can, can believe for something with you. That's right. If you want to sow a seed yeah. and you want, you want the abundance, like the miracle of the fish and loaves, if you need a job, if you need a anything, healing. Anything. Believe yeah. it for it and allow our team to believe for it with you. We want to see the miracle power happen. All we ask is that you call us back whenever your miracle comes yes, through. Yes, because we, we want know. that testimony. We do. So, we so this day is really incredible. And a lot of a lot of uh, other ministries, a lot of other churches go. You guys are crazy. You're not doing services today. Yeah, You're not crazy. doing services. Well, we are doing a service. We're doing a children's service uh, starting right at eleven o'clock in our auditorium. Yes, but. 
we are doing a service. This is it. This is you service. know what? Yeah. We're not we're not inside, and and we may not be listening to a live yeah. worship band, and and Pastor Troy may not be in the pulpit here uh, locally, but we are doing a service. We're serving. Yes, just just exactly. just because you're not in a building and 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 together, then then you get your other pastors say, well, no service, no offering. Oh no, there's an offering. There's an offering. There is. Yes. And, but we have enough faith in our God that he's going to take care of all our needs and yeah. even abundantly bless uh, us more than we could ever dream or imagine. But yeah. we're doing a service right now. The Holy Spirit is here right now. And we're literally believing that people are going to be healed. Prayers are going yes. to be answered. Yes. Chains are going to be broken. People are going to be set free because we're doing what the kingdom said to do. Jesus yeah. said the kingdom's That's coming awesome. quickly. And you know what? Not only do we get the opportunity to pray for people and see sign miracles, signs, miracles, and wonders, but we also, the Lord brings us ministry through the food bank yeah. all the time. Yeah. Very much so. All the time. Whenever we're, like, serving, you know, we'll hear of a story and, you know, move through compassion, just like King Jesus. We, we do something about it. We don't just hear the story and we're, we're compassionate, on the, compassionate on them. I think we even gave away a car at the food bank. Was yeah. it last Christmas time? Yeah, I think it was, it was it was sometime in the fall that uh, we, we ran across a lady. Actually, she was in the food bank line, and her car broke down. Okay, yeah. Oh, that's and right, it, yeah. it literally fell apart, like, and we had to That's pick up not all, the Lord, <laughs> right? We had to no. get all our food, and we actually took her home, and uh, then we began to go to work. Yeah. When the Lord sends us ministry, we, you know, Pastor Troy always says, we never go looking for ministry. We never mm -hmm. do. One reason is we have so much, we can't take care of it is, so... We always pay attention to what the Lord sends us. Yeah, that's right. So we, we knew of an opportunity. Someone wanted to donate a car, and uh, and we began to say, hey, we'll put the feelers out, look around, see who's in need. And this lady shows up on a Saturday morning. She breaks down in line. We had to move her out of line. We took care of her, got her home, and so forth. And two weeks later, we surprised her. Uh, she showed up. We made sure she was going to be there. And she showed up in someone else's car. And then we had her car hidden inside, and we had it totally loaded down. That's Thank God she yeah. didn't have a wreck on the way home because she'd have got know. killed by canned goods. Oh gosh, but it was right. totally loaded. The whole car yes. was loaded with food. And uh, we also got her a Christmas tree and did yeah, some Christmas shopping. And we for gave her, her uh, we gave her gift cards and all kinds of stuff. That's we, what we I love. Her. What I, I mean, love about Open Door Church and what we do here, um, this is just through the leading of Pastor Troy, is that. We don't just answer the need. We yes, go above and above beyond, beyond the need. Because no. that's what Jesus would do. Yeah. yeah. We just don't give them a little bit to get them by. Yeah. Because Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to bless somebody, you better bless them abundantly. abundantly. You're not doing what the Father's called you to do. Yeah. Just to give them the need to get by the next day is not what he does. Right. He blesses you to sustain you. All yes. these people are going to get so much food. <laughs> like I just, I just know they're gonna get so much food. They're gonna go home and wonder how they're gonna fit it in their refrigerator and how no. they're gonna yeah. fit it in their pantry. They're That's gonna incredible. go from the problem of how am I gonna get groceries? The, this pantry is so empty. To the problem of oh my gosh, how am I gonna fit these in my pantry? It's gonna be so right? full. <laughs> so what you don't see behind you, they actually open up the line and here comes our oh, very yay. first car. So we've actually started the uh, giving right. out of the food, and we've opened up the lines now. And if you're watching by chance and you're saying, oh, man, I wish I'd known about this, this is going to go on for a few yes, hours. Get in is. your car Join right us. now. Come to 301 South Dobson. You'll find the parking guys out there. They'll line you up. And here, no strings attached. No strings, no attached. No strings attached. We'll have Cadillacs go through. We don't judge anybody. No. We love everybody because they are the creation of God. And everybody has needs. Everybody's got to eat. Everybody That's has right. needs. Everybody's yep. got to eat. So if you <laughs> have a Cadillac payment, maybe why yeah. they need groceries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you have a need or you know someone have a need, come. Tell yes. them to come down. Let us love on them. Let's pray for them. Let us minister to them. Let us be the hands and feet of Jesus. It's as much as of us being a blessing to you guys, it's a blessing to us. Yeah, absolutely. And just know that we do this every single week, whether it's at our Joshua Food Bank or it's at our Walnut Springs Food Bank or even what we do in Cleburne at the Cleburne The Railroaders, Railroaders. And we also do the, uh, we help supply the Nakona Food the Bank. The Nakona Food Bank, yeah. And there's so many places that we help supply that we don't even really even talk about. So if you want to help us to help supply others, yes. you can partner with us. Yeah, All you have to do you. is call 877. 4130888 or you can give by texting open door exp or actually it's ODC exp yes ODC exp to 77977 partner with us you know it's 
bring what is that scripture verse mr pastor about bringing it into the storehouse yeah and bring all your tithes to the storehouse yeah. that there may be plenty why is there plenty because there's plenty of need yes yeah and you know what we know what to do with it yeah. exactly we know what to do with it if you're sitting there exactly. going man i wish i could do something like that but i just don't even know how to get started guess what we know where to get started at <laughs> we know how to yeah. do it it's amazing <laughs> i already had someone in the line come to me and say hey there's this lady uh she's been incarcerated she's gotten out and uh, just the needs already showing up here today uh, for her to get a job and stuff like this. She needs a computer, don't have a computer. And they yeah. asked me, what, 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 what do we do with this? I said, let's get, let's get all the information, start working it out. We'll contact them during the week and stuff like yeah. that. So not only call in the call center uh, if you want to give financially to support the ministry going on here or giving your tithes and offerings, if you have a prayer request, yes. yeah. if you have a need, yeah. there's people on our call center right now that will yes. take that phone call and they will call down heaven into Absolutely. your earth and bring the power of God into wherever you have lack because God has plenty. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. All right. We are about two minutes until service. Um, I guess please like, comment, share if you haven't already. We are about to get into the service here. Let you know that we are still going through some Black Friday sales. You can get conference tickets yes. for 30% off by using the code CHRISTMAS. Um, call 877-413-0888 to hear more about our Black Friday deals. We've got something special for you all the way until Cyber Monday. Yeah, don't the, the conference that's coming up in January uh, 19th, 20th, and 21st, the New Beginnings 2021, uh, right now it's scheduled to be at uh, Fort Worth Convention Center. If you have not got your ticket and you need to, some of the world's greatest prophetic yes. voices are going to be there, and yes. they're going to share the word of the God for the year, what they're hearing God say. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to be there. Yes, I'm yeah. going to be there because I want to hear what God is doing, and I want to get in on that. So I encourage you, Absolutely. get your 30% discount today and call and get those tickets. <laughs> All right, you guys. Man, you know, on the tail end of Thanksgiving, really, I think the last thing that we should probably talk about is let's give God praise and, and thanksgiving. Yeah. Man, can, let's give him some thanks yes. for what we've got going on here. Yes. I am so thankful that yes. Jesus is still doing miracles today. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I, I, I'm thankful that uh, he gave me an invitation to be a part of all this. Yeah. I'm, I'm thankful that I'm a part of a body of Christ that still believes the Bible. Absolutely. You know, I'm thankful that you can look here and not not even think the the harvest is plenty but the workers are few. We've yes. got some amazing workers yes. that are I, I'm so thankful, so thankful I'm thankful for, for those who call Open Door Church their home. Yes. I'm thankful for our Can volunteers, you, you our membership. For? Yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for Pastor Troy and, and opening the door to all of this. Yes. Yeah. Um, so many people that open the door for to For his this. faithfulness. Pastor Troy, yes. you've been so faithful over the years. We do yeah. this because of you being faithful. That's right. I love what he says. He says, you don't have to be successful in all things. Right. But if you're faithful, you'll be fruitful in Absolutely. all things. Absolutely. Well, yes. I just got it in my ear that it's 11 o'clock. You guys, are y'all ready to go worship? Let's worship our Lord while we're thinking about how thankful yes. we are. We are about to get into this line. We are going to continue to show you this line in the bottom of the screen. We just ask you, please comment below what you're thankful for. Yes. Call 877-413-0888 and partner with us in doing this. Don't just look. Come be involved, guys. All right, we love you all. Thank you for joining us for this 30 Minutes guys. Before Blessings Revolution you guys. Sunday. Bye. 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 <laughs>
chosen victory and now you're seated forever on the throne so why should my heart feel what you defeated I will trust in you There's no reason why you can't break through No mountain you can't move All things are possible There's no broken body you can raise No soul that you can save All things are possible happens in our homes 
I mean, it really does. That's the nucleus of every person is their home. And I think sometimes the news is so overwhelming because we hear about places from across the world. We hear about New York. We hear about everything that's happening around us. And we have this powerlessness come over us. Like we, we, we need to do something about that. But what can we do about it? And we're looking so much out there that we forget like the ministry that, that I have to my husband, the ministry I have to my home, the ministry I have to my friends and people that are in my immediate surrounding, you know, that God puts in our immediate path every day. You know, we're overlooking them to think, what can I do for New York? And we're forgetting the person that's serving us dinner at Benny's, you know what sure, I mean? Sure. And, and it really does start in the home. Revival starts in the home. Yes. And I, I believe that he is beginning to awaken us to that that um, what we have minimized as a ministry to our family is actually the number one most important thing that you can do if you truly want revival in this land. It's to start in your family, in your home, and go out to your neighbor and the people that you meet every day. And if we do that faithfully, revival organically happens. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's going to look different than we think yes. it's going to. I was just going to say that. It's, everything is different right now. You know, I used to have the house to myself for hours. I work from home. And anytime I felt led to go into the prayer closet, to, to go to battle, I had that freedom. I love that I have my kiddos at home full time now, but everything is different. The way that I serve in my house has dramatically changed. And that's a challenge that I'm going through right now is finding the new normal. Finding, I hope it's a temporary <laughs> new normal, but you're right, it starts from the home. And right now homes are different. They're not the way that we've always known it to be. And so we have to find new ways to be able to serve, new ways to be able to cry out to God. Because as a mom, it's like, yes, I wanna get down on my knees and scream out, but I don't want to scare my children. So I have to find new ways to battle. So I just, I pray that we all we'll be able to find a new way so that revival can start in, in our own homes. God, and that it will just overflow into our neighborhood and into our communities, God. And that we will be able to reach people in a way that we never have before because it's different. Help us to just find be able to find our center again where you're at the center and that we're all connected to you, God. Love you, Lord. Thank you, God, for ministering to all of the hearts who feel overwhelmed during this time and just feel like that they're not doing enough. I hear God saying, you're doing enough. He's working with you. It's gonna take time. Don't expect it to be instant. He's right there with you fine-tuning your heart, fine-tuning your mind to help you to be able to work through this and to be the pillar for your family, and to be able to spark revival there for your family. You're doing enough. I just keep hearing that. You're doing enough. Mama, Daddy, you're doing enough. And He's going to help you continue to do enough. Thank you, Lord. Love you, Jesus.
goodness are this you is, cold this is amazing i am cold but i am warm in my heart <laughs> yeah this this is honestly unbelievable yes if someone says you want to know what the kingdom of god looks like we can sit behind us yes the kingdom of god looks just like that man wow. please if you have not already share this message over to your timeline spread the good news god is still in the miracle business and he is still serving through his people and also comment below where you're watching us from we love to see where you're tuning in all around the world yeah, th throw out where you're at. That way we can see, and also we can be praying over those regions because yeah. you're a light wherever you're at. Yes, and, yes, you uh, are. And we always encourage, the whole whole reason we tell everybody, share this, share this on social media, you're actually stepping in and becoming a media missionary. Yes, and the you're, more reaching, shares. you're reaching people that we yeah. wouldn't reach without you. Right on, right on. <laughs> so we're here now. We've already gone through worship, and, and of course, the services are online today. We're not doing a service in the actual building at Open Door Church. We're actually doing a service outside because yes. the church has left the building. And, and while we're giving away literally hundreds of thousands of pounds, we'll give way over 100,000 pounds of food today to people in our community. We got cars lined up uh, all the way, about a mile worth of cars actually going through. But what was so cool is we have speaker systems going on out here. We're actually listening to the service while you guys are watching yeah. it live online. Is this to look around the crowd? We have so many people that there's not enough opportunity to serve. So people are out here in the parking like just worshiping yes just raising their hands worshiping yes. god isn't that what heaven's gonna be like that is exactly what heaven's gonna be like amazing amazing we are here doing god's work and i just i love it the kingdom has come what is yeah. it the sky is not, not falling, falling. The, the kingdom, kingdom is, is coming. coming yes and you know what so. we have all this that we're going on here right now um, we're able to bless our local community, but we don't want to stop with just our local community because we actually have a need internationally that we want to. We yeah, want to we, we are into. honestly a worldwide ministry yes. through Open Door Church, through Troy Brewer Ministries, through Spark International, through Answer International. We're actually 
ministry is just not centrally located only here in Burleson, but we reach out all over nationally. But like you said, internationally, we are doing ministry all over the world yes. in many, many different countries. So we were sitting here thinking about, man, what what ministry opportunity that came to us this week do we want to share and talk about? <laughs> yeah, the one about 500 <laughs> opportunities. Which one do we want to share and talk about? But you know what? Um, my favorite one out. I'm just going to just gonna say that. My favorite one went out. Now, you know what? Actually, where was it? It's in the Himalayan mountains? It's in, it's in the country of Nepal. In we Nepal. got word uh, right before last weekend, I believe, yeah. that uh, there's a village up in the Himalayan mountains. And because of COVID, the supply chain uh, of being able to take care of the people groups in that area has been completely cut yeah. off. The country is completely shut down. And we got a call from uh, Todd Lassiter, our, our missionary endeavor over there that's really involved in sex trafficking, said, yeah. hey, I ran across this village. The people are starving and dying. They have no food whatsoever. And we know if it's food, it's for us. Yes. And so we were like, you know, we've got to do something. We're coming into these colder weathers. I, I think we have some pictures to show you. Um, Hunter, can you bring up the picture of all of the children in the village? Uh, we have a picture with some children in the village. We need to get them some warmer clothes, man. Yeah, and once again, we're in the Himalaya Mountains, <laughs> yeah, Mount Everest. Yeah, it's going to get cold. And uh, it stays cold year-round, but we're getting the time where it gets, actually, it's it's very detrimental to your health if you're not properly taken mm -hmm. care of. So since there's no supply chain and they're running out of food, they're selling everything. They're selling their blankets. They're even selling clothes just to get food. Yeah. And so we laid that need out last week. And what, what happened with that need, Tabitha? We, um, we've actually, so we knew that in order, to get the the first necessities out there to them that we were going to need about $8,000. And you know what? We were able to raise that. And so we're super excited that we're able to start this yes. work, but we aren't going to just start it and not finish it. And so we really, 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 really need your help in order to sustain this work. Um, Hunter, can you bring up that other picture of the house? that they live in. So I don't know if you're sitting at home in front of your warm fire right now, but this is what they have in the Himalayan mountains. And, and we need to do something about that. We need to bring them supplies so that they can properly winterize their homes. Um, we need to, you know, if, if we don't step up and rescue yeah. these people and help these people, they freeze to death. And I just can't have that on my conscience. Well, and what's, <laughs> what's crazy is too, is when we receive a need like that, we have to raise the money but sometimes, even if we don't have the money, we'll go ahead in faith and send the money out because yeah. you have to understand when a need is brought to our attention and we raise the money, the delay for them to get the needs and goods is a lot longer. So we yeah. knew that if we it took us a little while to raise the money, then their delay of relief would be longer. So we went ahead and sold into it, even though we didn't have the money for it. And the Lord always provided. They're yeah. literally... The only way to get food and, and clothing there is through uh, donkeys and mules. Yeah. There's no transportation whatsoever. So even getting them to them was going to take some time. And like you said, we've we've taken care of the immediate need, but it's going to be an ongoing need. Just because we bless them once don't mean it's going to sustain them. Yeah. And, and that's about one thing about the kingdom. When the kingdom comes, he just does not take the care of the immediate need. He takes care of the immediate need and sustains that need. That's where the abundance uh, yeah. where it talks about. I've come to give you abundant life. I'm just not taking care of you today, but I want to give you so much life. It continues on. It's an ongoing continuance of the blessing. And I believe that Pastor Troy said that this is a village of about 400 people. And so, you guys, we can step up and we can be like mayors of a village of 400 right on, people. You know? you know, we can bring the kingdom of the Lord. We can see 400 people 400 salvations just immediately. Yeah, and a lot of like people that. say, you know, you guys do all this blessing, but where does Jesus come in? It's the heart of the Father. Yeah. First thing he said is you got to love people. Mm -hmm. It's hard to give them the kingdom if you're not loving them. So so this this meeting the physical needs opens up their heart for us to begin to share the love of Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, I think the, the greatest way to reach somebody for Jesus is to show them that he sees them through you. Yeah. When you see... When you see 400 people in a village in the Himalayans about to freeze to death. And you say, you know what? We see you and we care about you enough to do something. And we don't care what it costs. We don't care how long it takes. We don't care how many times we have to get in front of a camera and say, people, please help us. Partner with us in this. We'll do it because Jesus loves you that much. Yeah. And I mean, if the Lord said that to you, like, like that's how we reach them for Jesus. We love them. So... It's our giving time right now. Yeah. 
And even though we're actually not doing a service inside the building, we are doing one outside the building. We're also doing one online. So we encourage you that if you have a, if you have a, a gift to give, if you have a tithe and offering, we have yeah. many different ways. But it's not just to keep our church going. It's actually to take, it's actually literally life and death for yes. hundreds of thousands of people all over the world that we pour into, that we sustain, that we bless. Uh, some, sometimes it's taking care of medical needs or, or our medical clinics over in e Eastern Africa and stuff like this. So I, I challenge you, and I think Tabitha has a scripture out of Hebrews <laughs> chapter 13, is it is? Yes, I have the scripture, you guys. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16. But do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. We just want to please the Lord. We just want to please the Lord. We want to make the Father very, very yeah. pleased. And, and so we're the asking sacrifices. you to join us yes. in pleasing the Lord. Make that sacrifice and help us to do good. My favorite way of giving is this, and it's simple. Since we're, we've moved in into a kind of a techie, uh, uh, fast paced kind of lifestyle is yeah. I literally go on my phone and I have a program it's 77977 and I type that number in as a text and then when it pulls up the thing I actually put ODC EXP and I, every week that's how I give I don't have yeah. to worry about sending anything in I don't have to go find uh, if we're in the auditorium some of the card readers I just do it real quick and it's done so if you want to give you can text ODC EXP to 77977. There's yes. other ways. How else do we get that? Yes. Um, if you wanted to go online, you could do that by going to www.opendoorexperience.com forward slash giving. You can give your tithes and offerings there. You can even set up automatic payments there as well. And I believe you can do that with the text messaging you as, can. too. It asks you if you want to do a one-time gift yeah. or a recurring gift. So you can do it that way never worry about it again. Mm -hmm. Or you can call our call center. Yes. We have operators standing by right now. They will pray with you. If you're believing for something, while you sow this seed, if you need a financial miracle, if you need a healing, if you want to believe for something, we want to believe for it with you. So you can call 877-413-0888. We have operators standing by. They can help you with taking your financial um, donation, and then they can pray with you about whatever it is that you're believing for. Will you join me right now as I pray? Yes. Let's yes. do this. Let's do it. So, Father, we love you and we praise you. God, we give you thanks. This is the week of Thanksgiving, and we thank you for all the great and mighty things that you've done. God, we thank you for this day yes, right now as all these literally hundreds and even over a 1,000 people that are coming through, and we're being able to bless them and love them. We're, we're actually getting to act like our daddy. And I'm so grateful for that today, Father. And I pray right now that you would bless the offering, you would bless the gifts and the tithes that are being given. God, literally, as Jesus took the loaves and fishes and multiplied it and put kingdom anointing on it, I pray that you would take the offerings right now that are coming in and break them and bless them and put the kingdom multiplying anointing on it yes, so that we can not only take care of this village in Nepal, take care of all our orphanages and all, all the ministries around the world, but also we can do a greater impact right here in Burleson. In Texas. Amen. Father, yes, I love Lord. you and I praise you. Bless our pastor as he begins to speak here in just a few moments. Take the word of God that he's going to share and I pray that it would be transformation in people's lives that listen to it. Yes. We ask it in Jesus' precious Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys, we're going to give you a few more minutes to give and to t send in your offering and then we have an amazing and encouraging word by Pastor Troy Brewer. Please share this message if you have not already. Comment below where you're watching us from and join us in Servolution Sunday. It wasn't for nothing that you shed your own blood So I'm gonna live like my shame is gone I won't be shackled to the way I was So I'm gonna live like my chains are gone, gone Now my sin is dead and gone I sing Hallelujah. Done, done. He is risen in his dirt. And I see Hallelujah. Like the stone is gone 
Well, welcome back, and thank you so much for partnering with us here at Open Door Church and all the ministry that we do around the world. Without you, we could not be the impact and the kingdom players in this day and age without you. So I want to thank you so much for partnering with us. Now, I want you to get ready. Hopefully, you have your Bible with you or your, or your Bible on your phone app, and I want you to get it ready, and I want you to welcome our pastor, senior pastor, Troy Brewer, as he brings another message out of the Servolution series, Servolution 2020. Let's welcome our pastor right now. God bless you guys. Well, hello, my friends. Blessing and peace on you in the mighty name of King Jesus. Welcome now to this 2020 special edition of Servolution Sunday. Ta-da! It's something, guys, that we think about all year long. And right now, at the time that I'm preaching this, right here in this very parking lot, my friends are out there, guys, we're, 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 we're just killing it. We're demonstrating Jesus in every way that we can by giving away so much food, you know, several hundred thousand pounds of food today. I mean, that's the way that it is, and it's happening. And we're doing it right here in the parking lot. So instead of doing one service today, I'm sorry, instead of doing three services, I should say, we're actually only doing one service today, this 11 o'clock service, and I'm so grateful that you joined me. Now, if you're watching this later on during the day because you were out here working, Thank you. Thank you for being the hands and feet of King Jesus. Thank you for being a part of our tribe. Thank you, man, for loving us. Thank you guys for loving Jesus. Thank you for loving people that you don't even know. Yeah, all, all of that. I commend you and I bless you. Friends, I'm just going to spend just a few minutes talking to you. As we're handing out hundreds of thousands of pounds of groceries, as we're doing a huge outreach for children, as we are going from car to car and praying for people, as we're hugging people, loving people, telling people, do not fear, Jesus is here. Amen? The sky is not falling, but the kingdom is coming. Man, I love that. That as we're doing that, I want to bring a word to you and just talk to you and tell you, if, if you were going to ask me the question and say, Pastor Troy, I don't really understand why you guys do so much outreach. I mean, it's cool that you do it, but, but really and truly, what's your motivation behind it? My chief motivation, more than anything, is, guys, I want to just tell you, I don't want to do church without Jesus. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm actually fearful of the Laodicean church. The Laodicean church, I'm also fearful of the Ephesian church. If you don't know what I'm talking about, over in the book of Revelation, um, in chapter two and chapter three, he begins by talking to the church of Ephesus, and then he ends by talking to the church of the Laodiceans. And the church of Ephesus, he tells them, he says, look, he says, um, if you don't become passionate about the, the very first way that you are passionate, if you're not passionate about me anymore, here's what's real is I will remove my candlestick. What does that mean? It means, it means this, you can do church without me. It means you can just flat out do church without me because I'm not going to be there. You can get up, you can read the Bible, you can tell everybody about who I used to be. You can read all the future prophecies in the book of Revelation about who I'm going to be, but you're not going to have a clue who I am now. And I'm actually scared of that. Like, no, I don't want to do church without King Jesus. Another motivation that I, uh, that I have is that if we're going to do, if we're going to, I don't want to do church without actually being the church. Now, Open Door Church is a growing community, and I praise God, you know, that our church is growing. I praise God for all the people all over the world that love our church. But I want to tell you, man, uh, I do big church to do big ministry. That's it. If we're not going to do big ministry, I am not interested at all in actually doing big church. It's too hard. There's too many moving parts. And like, for what? For what? You know, so that people, so that I can have a camera in my face? Oh, no. No, man. What's real is I want to do big ministry. This week, we've done a tremendous ministry in the nation of Nepal. We've done another one in Mexico. We're going to be in Mexico next week doing a tremendous outreach. Our food outreach is blowing up and doing incredible things. Friends, we're inspiring other people to do that. We're saving girls out of sexual trafficking. We're digging water wells all over the world. We're, we're, well, we're just doing this stuff. And I tell you this, guys, I, I don't want to do big church without doing big ministry. I want to give you two more reasons of why we are so radical about helping so many people who and doing so many crazy things. Um, one has to do with the simple issue of authority. If I get up and if I preach, I want to have an anointing upon my life that actually touches people. I don't want to just have like, you know, a cerebral 50 pound head understanding of the Bible. I want to have power. Because Paul said, I did not come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom, but I came to you in full 
demonstration of the Spirit and a power. Man, I like that. This last year, I've been asking King Jesus, Lord, in the midst of so many wineskin changes, what, what are the things that, that we really need to pay attention to? What is church all about? And this is what I believe that God spoke to me because God speaks to me in phrases. And I wrote down this phrase, and I've been sticking with it all year. It's kind of like the mission statement of Open Door Church. Like, what are you talking about? The mission statement. Right on. What is it? To be a fearless demonstration a fearless demonstration of freedom, redemption, and the goodness of God. A fearless demonstration of, of freedom, redemption, and the goodness of God. And I want to do that. I want to do that bad. And I want to tell you, I want to do it with power. I, I don't want to have an impotent walk with King Jesus. I, I want to have a powerful walk with King Jesus. And I, let me tell you where you get your authority. You do not get your authority by how many Bible verses you know. You do not get your authority by how many people you have in your church. You do not get your authority by how much money you have in the bank or how many pieces of paper you have on the wall. Those are all good things to have, but that's not where you get your authority from. You get your authority from being a servant. And you can never, ever, 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 ever get away from that. Whenever I think about the scriptures and I look at I look at the early church and I look at who they were and the incredible difference that they made. Brother Paul stands out as somebody that is remarkable to me, obviously. Um, but there's, a, there's another troublemaker besides Brother Paul. And this brother's name is Brother James. And Brother James is the half-brother of King Jesus. And uh, he's, he's a writer. And his book is way different than all the other books in the New Testament. It is very much the put up or shut up book of the New Testament. And Brother James is a troublemaker. And Brother James says, well, if you say you have it in your heart, the rest of us should be able to see it within your life. If you say that you love people, show me. If you say that you hate uh, poverty, show me. If you say that you hate slavery, show me. If you say that you love people that nobody else loves, show me. It's very much the put up or shut up book. And I love the book of James. I just like, man. It also strikes me that the two, two of the meanest books in the New Testament is Jude and James. And those were the half brothers of King Jesus. Why? Because Jesus had a cray cray family, just like you do and just like I do. Uh, his gene pool was messed up outside of the perfection of deity. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny to me. So Brother James, whenever he gets ready to give his credentials about this letter that he's about to write, he starts off and he talks about, let me tell you the authority that I have and why I have authority to give you the word that I'm about to give you. He could have said, he could have said this. He could have said, I'm the half brother of Jesus Christ. And I grew up with him. I know him better than any of you guys do. And I think you ought to listen to me. Nope, that's not where his authority came from. He could have said, Hey, I was there when the angel busted Peter out of prison. That's Acts chapter 12, verse 17. No, that's not what he said. And I'm, by the way, that's pretty big credentials. You know, I, to be able to say, dude, I saw it. I know what happened. No, that's not what he says. He could have said, now I made the deciding speech at the Jerusalem council. That's Acts chapter 15, verse 13. Uh, he's like, no. He's like, I'm so well respected that even the council in Jerusalem lets me decide. Okay, I got some clout. I'm telling you, I'm something else. Uh, I'm kind of a big deal. That's not what he says. He could have said, I am one of the pillars of the church. That's Galatians 2, 9. Yeah, Brother James could have said, hey, uh, just to remind you, I have authority because I'm one of the pillars of the church. I'm kind of a big deal. That's not what he says. He could have said, I was one of the select individuals that Christ appeared to after his resurrection. That's a pretty big deal. That's not what he said. Yeah, by the way, how do we know that? We know that out of Galatians 1, verse 19. Brother James could have wrote his book and said, I, I want to tell you this. These are my credentials. As a matter of fact, Paul did the same on his last visit to Jerusalem. He actually had me come and verify things. Uh, nope, that's not what he said. That's Acts 21, verse 18. He could have said, when Paul first got saved, I was the first guy he came to see for verification. That's Galatians 1.9. No, 
That's not what he said. So I, I'm going through these things. I'm looking, and it's like, okay, so what makes you think you have authority? What makes you think that when you speak this, it's going to come to pass? What makes you think that you can bring correction into disorder? He could have said, you know, when my brother Jude wrote his book, his highest credential was that he was my brother. He could have said that. My brother James can vouch for me, Jude 1.1. 1, 1. He didn't say that. Here's what he said. James 1.1 1, 1 begins like this. My name is James, and I am a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever you think about your credentials, and you think about your history with God, and you think about what God is doing in and through, and through your life, do you know that your authority does not come from all the things that people think your authority comes from? It comes from how you serve the Lord. Serving is not your identity. Your identity is you are a son or, or, or you are a daughter of the, Lord, of the Lord your God. Your highest credential of identity is that you are part of the family of Jesus Christ. So that's not what that is. Your highest credential for authority, though, is that you serve. Jesus says in Matthew 23, verse 11, but he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. Like, why would, why would King Jesus say something crazy like that? Because he has the greatest authority out of anybody else, and he is the greatest servant that has ever lived. He served both God and humanity in a way like no one will ever, ever, ever approach. Therefore, he has authority like nobody ever, ever, ever will approach. I thank God that the name of Jesus is above the name of cancer. You know why? Because he's the greatest servant. I thank God that the name of Jesus is above the name of poverty. And do you know why? Because he served. And I just wish that there would be a revolution in the body of Jesus and go, you know what? Whatever we thought before, we repent. Let's let our church serve our community, serve our community, serve our church, our community, our region, our nation, our hemisphere, and our world in a way that everybody says, dude, that is the Lord. Because if you did that, you'd have great authority. When you pray over people, they would be healed. Friends, some of the greatest miracles I've ever seen in my entire life Yes, I have, have, have not just been in India or Africa or Mexico or on the Amazon jungle or all the places I've been all over the world, my 53 different nations that I've traveled to preaching the gospel of Jesus. No, it's actually been at the Open Door Food Bank. And it's always been in the context of serving. I've seen blind eyes opened, literal blind eyes. I've seen people that had weeks left to live from cancer, their cancer completely disappear. We have seen, we've seen so many miracles, guys. I, I, I've seen a child that was unable to speak, lost a, a child that went, went through such horrible trauma in a car wreck that after years had gone completely nonverbal, open up her mouth and speak as if she'd been speaking the entire time. We've seen that. What was that? So how do you get into those kinds of miracles? You serve. What were you doing? We were sponsoring her family for Christmas. And we were given her toys and we were given their family all kinds of food and a big Christmas dinner and all that kind of stuff. And it was in the context of actually serving them that we had authority to pray and to see the goodness of God, actually see the goodness of God in the land of the living, not just read about it. See, I don't want to be the one just hearing about the stories. I want to be the one telling the stories. And the only way that I can do that is to not try and prove to everybody how smart I am, but to show everybody that I'm gonna serve. I'm gonna serve faithfully and I'm not gonna bell. I'm gonna serve with gladness and I'm not gonna be bitter. I'm gonna serve with excellence and I'm gonna go over the top, why? Because I wanna be a fearless demonstration of freedom, redemption, and the goodness of God. Hallelujah. So how do you get Jesus into a situation like, okay, I don't really have any authority in my finances and Man, it just, I constantly get beat up in my finances. I want to bring, I want to have authority in that. What do I got to do, man, to bring authority in it? You get Jesus into any situation by serving him in that situation. How do you get Jesus into your marriage? You serve Jesus in your marriage. How do you get Jesus into your thought life and into your want life? You serve Jesus in your thought life and into your want life. I could go on and on, but the bottom line is this. The way 
to the throne room is through the servant's quarters. And look, I'm a child of God. I'm a son of God. You are a child of God. You are a son of God. As many as, as who are led by the Spirit, these he has given power to be called the sons of God. Hallelujah. But, and that's my identity. Uh, my greatest credential of identity is that I'm part of the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But my greatest credential for authority is that I'll, I'm going to serve. So I'm not the kind of pastor that sends. I'm the kind of pastor that goes. And there are sending people. I know that there are. There are people who cannot go. But as long as I'm able to go, I'm not going to just send. I'm going to go. I'm going to be on the front lines. I'm actually going, I'm not, I don't want to just send our prison teams into prisons. I want to go into prisons. I don't want to just send our outreach teams out to do outreaches. I want to do the outreaches. I don't want to just send mission teams all over the world. I want to go to those places. I don't want to just send people out to save kids out of sexual trafficking. I want to actually save kids out of sexual trafficking. Like, why would you open yourself up to that trauma, that disease, that danger, that travel, uh, that weariness, that expense? Why would you do that? Because I have learned to love to serve. And I just, I hope that you do too. And I hope that as you see us here at Open Door Church today, be in the hands and feet of King Jesus, that you'll have a revolution of serving, a servolution take place within your own life that goes, you know what? I'm gonna wake up every single day for the rest of my life with a yes in my heart, a yes in my spirit that I'm ready because I don't think I'm high and mighty. I think I'm a man in desperate need of a savior and I found him and his name is King Jesus. And he has served me even serving me unto death and not any death, but the death of the cross. And how can I not be his friend? How can I not serve him? He's the greatest king ever, period. That's why I love to call him King Jesus. You know, in Texans, here, here in Texas, it's really difficult for Texans to wrap their head around kingship. Because we don't like that. When we think of kings, we think of King Ranch. That's what we think of. But we don't think of, oh, wow, it'd be really cool to be a part of somebody's kingdom. No, we're like, rain on that. You know what? I got my own place. I don't need anybody's approval. I don't need anybody's opinion. I don't give a rip what they think. I love rugged Western individualism. I do. I love it. But I found out as soon as I found out who Jesus was, that not only was he my friend, and not only, not only was he my spiritual husband, right, that I'm a part of his family. But I found out real quick that he's my king. And I'm like, I love him as my king. I love his kingdom. I love his heart. I love how things go whenever he gets his way. And so I want to walk in that. I want to walk in that over and over and over. And like, okay, where can I see miracles? You know, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it when people say, you know, you, you crazy miracle people say that there's miracles. I've never seen one. Well, that tells me something about you because it doesn't tell me that God doesn't do miracles. It tells me you can't see it. And part of the reason why you can't see it is because you're not in the right place. It's true that you do have to have an eye to see and an ear to hear. That's, that's supernatural hardware that only comes from going after that. But it's also true you're never going to see the power of God sitting in a hazmat suit on your couch in your bunker surrounded by toilet paper. No, you're going to have to get out. You're going to have to get out. You're going to have to be the people that God has called you to be. And you're going to have to be happy about it. And you're going to have to think it's hilarious that the Lord would invite you in and to give you authority and to give you power. So there's authority that comes with serving, but there's also power that comes with serving. Like, what are you talking about power? Serving in selflessness is where the power of the love of God is. Helping somebody that there's no benefit to you to help them. Blessing somebody in a way that's over the top, going out of your way to see things that it doesn't, it's not convenient for you and it doesn't help you in any way whatsoever, man, to, to get involved in that. You're already busy, but yet you're self, you selflessly service. I'm telling you, the power of God is there. Not only do you have a not only do you have authority to be there, but you have the power that you need to be there. Where does that come from? It comes from serving. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says, And I, brethren, in verse 1, I came to you. I did not come with the excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimonies of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except for Jesus Christ and Him crucified. 
I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. My speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but rather in the power of God. You know, this one single epistle contains some well-known phrases, including, and this is all depending upon the translation, all things to all men, without love I am nothing, through a glass darkly, and when I was a child, I spoke as a child, all that kind of stuff. But this scripture right here, 1 Corinthians 4.20, says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but it's a matter of power. I want to I want to close on this and just say that that when we first started the food outreach, we began to see outrageous miracles, miracles that I didn't even know that God did. And remember, we started we started the food bank five years before we started Open Door Church. Um, the old lady getting the house is such an incredible story. Um, the story of the Down syndrome man and the old lady who pr- who prayed with me, and literally while I was praying for them because they needed a situation because she was dying and she had a Down syndrome son and, and her Down syndrome son was, was in his 30s. And she's like, I don't know what's going to happen to him. And while we were praying, the phone rang and Walmart hired him. And I literally took him down, literally while we were praying for a solution. And oh, it was so miraculous. And they loved him and helped him and blessed him. And we got him into a home that was suitable for him. And he was happy there. And he had friends. And, and I preached his mama's funeral. And then about four years after I preached his mama's funeral, I preached his funeral. And I got to speak of the goodness of God and the power of God, the power of the love of God within their life. And do you know how we tapped into that? I took groceries to their house. That's how. A simple act of just serving, of just being a servant. Uh, the story of the shoes, if you know the story of the shoes, you'll have to hear that one of these days. So 16,000 pairs of shoes that came to us and the miracle of that. The story of the, Han- of the Hannah Montana clothes, the story of the cancer falling off into my hand. Like what? These are all common stories that we talk about here at Open Door Church, and these are stories that belong to our house. Um, These are incredible stories. Every single one of those stories doesn't come from just me getting up and preaching. It comes from all of us out serving. Friends, serving is the direct hotline to the power of God, and the way to the throne room is through the servants' quarters. So let me pray for you. Let's pray for all of us, man. Let's pray for each other. Man, let's pray for our outreach that is taking place here today. Let's believe God for his goodness. (laughs) Jesus. Jesus, I pray in the name of Jesus. I seek you, Lord God, and I love you. And I thank you, God, knowing that whenever I seek you, I find you. When I ask, you always answer. When I knock, God, you always open up that door. Sometimes, King Jesus, you knock. (laughs) Give us the grace. Give us the ability, sir, and the courage to open up that door. Father, I pray, God, that there wouldn't be, that there would indeed be a servolution a revolution, a change, a movement, a move of God towards serving that would happen in all of our churches, that would happen in this church and our region and all of our churches, Lord. And God, I just tell you, Lord, we repent for wanting to be comfortable. We repent, Father God, sir, for choosing to be a cruise ship instead of a battleship. Father God, sir, we just repent of that. I pray, God, that that would change here in the United States. God, I love you. I love you, sir, and I praise you. I lift, up, I lift up these thousands of people that are coming here to open door today, God. People, God, who need help. Oh, God, I pray, God, that, I pray, God, that more than groceries would go home to their homes. I pray, Father God, that the power of the Lord would go home. I pray, Father God, sir, that they'd carry home the grace of God. I pray, Father God, sir, that there'd be revival in those homes and those houses. God, that those families would love each other. God, that there would be simple solutions to complicated issues when it, comes to, when it comes to their home and when it comes to their house and their economy and how all that works, Lord. Jesus, you know those things. And Father, I love you and praise you and thank you, sir, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, my goodness. Servolution Sunday right here at Open Door Church. I'm so glad that you joined me today. 
thank you so much, man. I mean, I know, you know, like I know, it's a really big week, got all kinds of craziness going on, and Thanksgiving and all that kind of stuff, and then to join us on this special Servolution Sunday. And thank you. Thank you so much for that. You know, for as we gave up all three services today, we gave up everything that we do inside the house so that we could be outside of the house serving people. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is to say this to you. You know that there's no offerings today. There's no way for us to do offerings. So would you please consider standing with us? I double dog dare you, man, to do so. Consider standing with us as a church and saying, no, that's my tribe. I believe in a church that acts like that. We're doing this as a matter of faith, not because we have millions of dollars in the bank. So I know that your giving will make a tremendous difference, difference today. Be sure and give right now. It's, gonna, it's showing you here on this screen exactly how to give. And not only can you give any of these, you know, any of these three different ways, but you can always call us at 877-413-0888. And I have a whole room full of really good friends that are standing by waiting for you to call us. All right, guys, that's all the time that I have for today. I got to get back to work. Guys, God bless you so much. I call you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and highly favored of the Lord. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you all again for tuning in here for Servolution Sunday right here at Open Door Church in Burleson, Texas. We hope that this message blessed you, that it encouraged you, and that it inspired you to go and be the kingdom to other people. You know, you can serve in your community. You can serve right here. You can serve your children. You can serve your husband. You can serve your wife. You can serve your co-workers. There's so many opportunities every single day to bring Jesus to other people and to serve them. So let's have a servolution, guys. Share this message if you have not already. Comment below where you're watching us from, and we hope that you will join us this Wednesday. We're going to be here in the house for First Wednesday. Right here, we'll have a service at 7 p.m. We hope you will join us, and until next time, we call you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and highly favored of the Lord. Bye, you guys.